Hello YouTube friends. I thought we'd have a look in another of my suitcases. Uh, this one here is too big to go underneath the little overhead thing that I sometimes film in. And this is a suitcase that every now and then, uh, less so these days, but um, I'm sometimes asked to go and talk to uh, a groups, WI or whatever groups, about the trip I took to India uh, nine and a half years ago. Things Now, at the time, I wasn't taking video. What a shame. Uh, I've got some fantastic pictures, but I haven't got any video at all. Never mind. What's in this suitcase then? Okay. So I'm going to show you these bits and pieces. Jaipur, uh, where we started out, we landed in Delhi, but we went straight on a train, amazing train, to um, Jaipur and stayed there for uh, all about eight days in the Pink City. Pink City, uh, so-called, because of the, of the massive great big palace, which is painted pink, many, many stories high, beautiful pink palace. And the markets there were amazing. And um, we um, made friends with a tuk-tuk driver, one of those little motorbikes with a back on it, Ali, who took us to all sorts of different places where I could see the things I wanted, I wanted to see. So I suppose the first place we went to, I'd read all about the puppet workshops of uh, Sanganir. And there's a whole village of uh, people all the families are involved in making puppets. And I watched this guy carve this little puppet head out of a piece of mango wood. And then uh, bought some of the puppets. So this is the kind of the, the very, very traditional area for this kind of puppet. And this one's got very little in the way of um, animation to make her move. Enough just to sort of give you an idea that she's possibly dancing and uh, you could have a bit of fun with her. So she's in there. So the men would do the carvings of the faces and the women would make all these amazing dresses. And this one's quite a lot older. Hello. And you can articulate her arms and head quite easily. And she's got, oh, sorry, got your head on a bit weird there. And she's got a lovely big full skirt. I do have a bit of fun with her when I do these. I don't do the talks quite so much anymore. But because um, it's such a long time ago that I went there now. But there she is. And she's, uh, are you going to say hello to the YouTube friends? Yeah, you're going to do that? Yes, yeah, she is. While I was there, there was a puppet festival. And so I went along to see that. It was very, very interesting to be in the area where they made these. So that suitcase has got quite a lot of the old puppets going on in there. And another place that I wanted to see, I mostly wanted to go and see the fabric production, but I'd read that there was a paper making factory as well. And uh, I was uh, lucky enough to get to look round the paper. And this is the very last of the paper that I brought back with me. I've used this paper many, many times to make little uh, books or to use in all sorts of different ways. And then I also brought back some of this paper, which is um, the paper that I saw being made. And this one, I made this one into a little book. I used to make, I used to teach this book binding um, to uh, groups and to children and to all sorts of people. I had a physical workshop that people used to come to and do these things. So this, I'm talking about many years ago now, but this is left over from all of that time. And those, I, I can't think of good reasons. I bought a lot of this back. I mean, boxes and boxes of it. I had it shipped back to myself. And I, I did make a lot of uh, little books with these. I really, really like them, but they're almost all gone now. Now, mostly then, I really was there for the fabric uh, and for the everything else fantastically wonderful about the areas we were in. 
And so in uh, Saguenay, there is um, the Block Printing Museum. So there's a very, very rich tradition in that whole area of block printing. And we were lucky enough to see in this museum to see the blocks being carved beautifully. Uh, so if you think about a piece of block printed fabric, and I'm going to show you the piece that I made, and I'll show you the pictures of me making it. And so this is what I finally made here. With uh, So this block here, and then another block here, a third one here, and then a fourth block here. And the guy who was helping us, Martha and I, to make these little handkerchiefs, he was very diligent about making sure that we did things like get the corners correct and uh, space out the things properly. So I'm very pleased with that. But mostly block printing is about overlaying several blocks. I'll find you one here because I'm going to show you the fabrics now. Let's show you this one. So you can see, can't you, with this block here, that there would be one block to make the outline, one block to make the light blue, one block to make the dark blue, and another block to make this sort of brownie goldy colour. Four blocks, and they all had to register one with the other, so that sometimes when they didn't quite register, that was the that's the joy of this kind of um, fabric, is that there's the idiosyncrasies of the handmade um, uh, look to it. I always think that, um, you know, the beautiful ones that are all kind of gorgeously made are the sort of um, Monday morning ones. And then there's the Friday afternoon ones, uh, which maybe uh, didn't line up quite so well. There's another blue one here. It's beautiful fabric. So over the years then, I brought quite a bit of this. This is all I have left now, is um, this beautiful green. And there's a pink one. And this one, I like this one a lot. This one's got a sort of pale blue and grey and a little sort of gold sort of leaf going on with it. I like that one. So um, visiting the block printing then was uh, just unbelievably amazing. It was really, really great. And I bought this book because it has actual fabric samples in. And it's really, it's a really interesting read. So yeah, I brought lots of trinkets and souvenirs and things back with me and I've done lots of things with them over the years. And this might be the last thing that I managed to do with them. I've made a kit for the shop for you to make at your own pantaran. And I'll explain all about what a pantaran is. I made a few for myself and this is how they look best, I think hanging against a, a window or a glass door so that you get the sort of silhouette of them. And then as you get closer, you can see the designs and so on. And then these lovely little embellishments against the backdrop of my green rainy garden. It's a beautiful day today for the garden. It's pouring with rain. So let me show you what's in the Pantaran kit then. These um, are the, the 10 little hanging blocks here. And I've ironed the interfacing onto them for you to do the next step. There are 10 little beautifully matching bits of felt. And then the top hanging bar here and its piece of felt thread for you to stitch all of these together. And I'd suggest that you strand this into, this is six stranded embroidery thread and split it into three. Some little embellishments here. And also in here, there are the hanging hooks that you'll need. There's the instructions here for you in a little instruction booklet. And they're all packed into a little bag that I made, which has got my Pussy cat, uh, that's Norma there, and some of the last homey house things you might recognise. And then each one I made a little hanging label to put on the outside when I close this up on the sewing machine so that I know what colour it is you're getting in the inside. 
So that's in your Pantaran kit. So here they all are in Pink HQ, uh, waiting to go live in the shop, which they will be after this video is up. And I have one last batch of soap from Kerry. Uh, they'll be going live at the same time. I think this will be the last time we'll get the uh, last homey house Eileen soap. It's all ready packed now for the post. So that's, uh, they're all sitting waiting there in Pink HQ. If you want to hear about uh, the monthly updates, um, what Girl Rita and I are trying to do is make sure there's a shop update uh, once a month. And so for May, the shop update is the Pantaran kits. And I'm very fortunate to have the soap back in stock again. And we're going to try and make uh, a shop update around about the third week of every month. That's the plan. But in order to know about these uh, these things ahead of time, uh, join the mailing list on the website. If you go to the, I'll leave the web link in the description below, like I always do. And if you go to the website and scroll to the bottom of the home page, there you'll be invited to join the mailing list. And those people get mailed um, straight away uh, when this video goes live and hear about this first. What I might do now, I might do a like a slideshow and put lots of pictures in here which will tell that story of all the amazing sights and sounds that some of them that uh, Martha and I saw while we were there. Let's see if I can manage to do that.